your own personal contingency plan. Yeah, I don't know. But then you also have capital planning, investment control, and enterprise architecture, system design. I mean, there's lots of ways that you can recycle this category information. So that NIST 834 document is a, is, is a good document. I think I wrote that down on the previous pages. Well, you know, and it's always good to look at the horse's mouth. Um, the National Strategy for Cyberspace Operations, Office of the Chairman, Joint Chief Staff, for operational plan plans development, um, the combination of threats, which are potentials, the vulnerabilities, which are weaknesses in your system, and the impact to them must be evaluated in order to identify important trends and decide where our effort should be applied to eliminate or reduce that threat. That's basically risk analysis. Eliminate, reduce vulnerabilities, and assess, coordinate, and deconflict all cyberspace operations. So you, you, mean you, you have to evaluate this stuff. Well, like the back to your quote at the beginning of the chapter. Very similar, yes. All right, so this would be the selected actual controls over 853. Um, implement the controls. And it, this references back to the risk management framework, steps two is in step three. And those we reviewed yesterday, or you introduced us to yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's actually a recycled. That's fine. Repetition. So you could just put RMF on your notes mm -hmm. and uh, I'll get right with the right space. Um, and then FIPS 2 purpose, this is the minimum. Forget FIPS 2 is the minimum security requirement. You need 153 revision 3. That would be your control selection. So then we're referencing the old material. Yeah, I have to make sure my copy that they gave me of 853 is, is the revision 3. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming the ISOs keep the most current copies, but I don't, don't know. Don't assume that. I, yeah. Because <laughs> they, they do go out of bait. I mean, you do, with some of the revision numbers, I mean, literally, if you're not watching the board, mm -hmm. then, you know, you better watch out. I actually use Google Alerts oh, okay. for information like that. Okay. You basically, all you do is fill it out. So let's say you want NIST, you know, 800-53. Anytime Google, somebody pushes something out to Google or finds a rat on it, they'll email you on what that oh, result okay. is. So what that does, it, it takes away from, I have to go find this information, it finds me. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, if you haven't got a Google or, you know, whatever copy you have is most, is most recent one. Right. Okay. And, yeah, exactly. And, like, I'll, I'll even... Um, I was doing email this morning, and the Google Alerts, like I have 1,800 of them, <laughs> that, um, and I'll do this by subject, and you can um, minimize some categories here. You can see some of the stuff that I track. Basically, DOD 8570, DEF CON, risk, computer security, CISSP, ethical hacking. And so literally, when there's any information on this subject, I get literally hundreds and hundreds oh, okay. of results. Um, and, and that helps me. In the industrial age, if you wanted something, you had to go get it. With the information age, you can set technology to basically go get it for you and retrieve it. And so that's it. So basically, it comes down to being effective. Instead of me trying to monitor Google for all these changes, the changes find me. Makes sense. Yeah, and actually, from a business sense, it works too because I use the social networks. Instead of me having to go find business, I use the social engineering, or not social engineering, social networking, so the business finds me. And so literally, uh, I'm going to double my, my salary as a result of that because I don't have to babysit the internet and have to constantly make marketing or sales right. phone calls. I can just let them, I just do what I normally do, and then I get enough phone calls out of that. Hey, do you want to teach class here, there, or the other? And boom, that's enough work for me to do. So I'm, I'm using the product of technology, really, to make that difference. Uh, your minimum security requirements, here's your categories here, you have your class, and then you have your the family that it belongs to, and then the, the two-letter identifier. Is this FIPS 200? Yes. Um, uh, 
would be Appendix F in okay. this 853. Okay. That's a high, actually that's Appendix D. Okay. Uh, appendix X would be, uh, D, uh, F, F would be the details okay. of that. <clears throat> and so, you know, that's helpful to know. But notice that there are management, operational, technical, that's the class or the, or the family. Family's just the name. And then you can look at, you know, configuration management, you can look at contingency planning, identification and authentication, incident response, maintenance, media protection, physical and environmental protection, planning, and literally it just keeps going personnel security, risk assessment, systems and service acquisition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for selecting a security control, that's going to be 853. Okay. And the 853 RV control um, catalog. What's that? I think is what we were looking at earlier. Make sure it's the right document. Oh, it looks like Rev 4 came out. Let's see what that is. Oh. November 4, 2011. Okay, so that just got released. So let's see what, what that has to say. Announce, uh, this is just the announcement. Oh, okay, so it's not actually revised yet. Right. Okay. Wait, hold on. Uh, you know, it should, we should be able to pull it. Earth 3. Let's see what's going on. Okay, it's not coming up, so we'll just go off to 53. Yeah, very. I mean, I don't know what the difference is between th uh, three and four, because four so new. But um, basically, in this 853, your con control categories, your base signs, trust or assurance or integrity. Are the, let's see. So it looks like. Okay, now it's still appendix F. Okay. To where that would be, you know, same thing. PM9. Okay, looks familiar. Okay. <clears throat> it will take some time to get into the subcategories of the identifier, like access control one through seven or whatever it is. Uh, that that will take time, so don't think that that's going to come to you overnight. Were you saying the granularity of yeah. that is more fitzy than cap? Right? Exactly. Okay. It's it basically it's it's more detailed because it's if the person actually had done it because they understand their role and responsibility, then they would be exposed to it. So it's really a lot more depth. Which also makes it a little bit harder as well. Not not that it is, I mean Hard is only a rating of how prepared you are. Right. Not prepared okay. for anything that's hard. Um, but yes, it is more more depth. All right. So the baselines, and then the second, the next one would be uh, baselines, um, and that simply is just the starting point or your initial assessment of information. You still got your low, medium, and high, and you're going to tailor that uh, information to the system at hand. Some of the common controls, again, we talked about them being inheritable, mm -hmm. more organizational-wide, and common control uh, categories slash candidates would be the incident response. In other words, that can apply to just about anything. These guys right here. Incident response, security training, awareness, personnel, security, physical, and intrusion detection. Is access control 
I know we use access control, I think, as a... As a um, um, yeah, control. I mean, that could, that <coughs> could be... Okay. Uh, certainly, uh, it depends because, like, you've got physical security. Well, you can have access control and protect them for that versus computer or system. You can have access control okay. there too. Um, and external environments, um, these are used by but not part of the organization and replace the functionality. I think that's supposed to be an if. Internal information says may completely replace functionality if it's an internal information system. So uh, this is defining, securing, and obtaining assurance of the actual acceptable risk level or see the risk management framework. Also, um, in forensics, we have chain of custody. Well, here we're gonna look at chain, um, chain of trust. So make sure that the integrity through the process is maintained. So some people think the process doesn't matter, and I would absolutely disagree with that. You, you try change, you try reordering the process of baking a cake. The process matters. I mean, you don't you don't cook it then add eggs, right? All right. So assurance. Another name for assurance is trust. With trust being confidence, so it's the grounds for confidence. You trust that what you've done it is basically assessed correctly, implemented correctly, maintained correctly throughout the life cycle. And of course, you can revise this over time. That'll be on ongoing. And as the environment changes, there could be new technologies, or there's always going to be new emerging threats slash vulnerabilities as we uncover them. Sometimes it's a simple social engineering. Other times it's very, very advanced. Uh, one, categ write this down. one category would be something like APTs, Advanced Persistent Threats. Okay. Write that down. APT, Advanced Persistent Threats. Um, that is a type of attack that is uh, basically a combination of individual attacks, but they're done in a very, very specific and targeted way. So it's the advanced persistent threat. So in other words, you as an employee, you could be sitting at your computer, click on a link, get some software, download it, gets installed into like a directory that doesn't have permissions, restrictions on it, like my documents. You can pretty much put anything you want there, run the program from that directory, and what it does is it that program would gather all sorts of data from your system, encrypt it, and then send it out through an encrypted VPN slash tunnel through your network to its phone home location. And then you as the, the responder to that, um, you really can't even tell what's going on because once that software is on your system, it locks your system down by encrypting information and sending it out. So where's it going? You don't even know. You can't even see it. So it's the combination of these attack methods. APTs have been out for a little bit, but not that many people know about them. Oh, and I think lunch is here. Oh.